I'm literally shrinking. It's so crazy. All right, hold on. Give me one moment to go live on Facebook and then let me turn off the microphone or else we're gonna have us in, in stereo. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap of what I was just speaking about. So Mondays, we're doing hot seat coaching for- um, Microphone or else we're gonna have us in. There we go. So on Mondays, I'm gonna do hot seat coaching for what I call psychic surgery, which is removing you know, blocks that people have, energetic blocks. And then uh, this is gonna be um, clearing the clairs. So one of you, I'll take a volunteer um, to open up, uh, further open up one of your psychic senses. All right, Meg raised her hand, so Meg's in. All right, Meg, you're on today. Um, and then on Fridays, I'm doing spot um, Akashic record readings. And there's gonna be a couple other little master classes that are gonna happen in between like on a Tuesday or a Thursday, but they'll come as I move. Like yesterday, we did one about manifestation. that was really cool. And it's all recorded and it's on my YouTube channel and it's on my Facebook. So if you guys want, you can always go back to that. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap for the people on Facebook. Today, Wednesday is Clearing the Clairs Day. So this is a technique that I developed um, in concert and working with spirit in helping people to develop the psychic abilities that they have that are beyond the physical senses of taste, touch, smell, um, sound, and taste, touch, anyway, the five physical senses. <laughs> Seeing, hearing, speaking, touching, and tasting. No, I did that wrong. Anyway, so the ones on the psychic side are clairvoyance, the ability to see spirit beyond your eyes, clairaudience, the ability to hear spirit beyond your physical ears, clairsentience, which is the ability to feel spirit beyond your physical senses, and claircognizance, which is where you just know information. So each of you have those abilities at different levels. And what I do in this in this class that I teach called Clearing the Clairs is I measure people and I say on a scale of one to 10 and you trust your intuition. So it's the very first answer that comes. I say on a scale of one to 10, where is your clairvoyance? And a number will pop up. Now, <laughs> if you take more than a minute to say that number, I'm gonna say to you, if, you, if, you, if I say what, you know, on a scale of one to 10, what's that number? And you go five, I'll say to you, okay, what was the first answer that you had? And you might say six, but I thought it was too high. So I changed this to five. It's the very first answer that comes, okay? Then there's a process that we do of psychic surgery, which is the work that I do on Mondays of moving whatever it is that's blocking you from having that thing be, you know, at an eight, nine, 10. I have one woman I did this with. And first time I said to her, at what level of your, is your Claire cognizant? She goes 40 and she wasn't wrong. Her abilities are extraordinary. What I try to get people to in the course that I teach is eight, nines, and tens, because there you're gonna have full access to working in the Akashic Records, which is a class that I teach after that. Because when you're in the Akashic Records, you're in the spiritual iCloud is what I call it. Anyway, so I, for my Claire audience, I love the story. It was 1984, I had just started my meditation journey. I was reading a book called Three Magic Words. And I go to work, go to go to work that day. And I hear this voice that says, take an extra pair of stockings and I'm like, Hello? And the voice says again, take an extra pair of stockings. And I'm like, I'm not taking an extra pair of stockings. And the voice says emphatically for a third time, take an extra pair of stockings. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is ridiculous. Grab them, shut them in my purse, go to work. Don't even think anything of it. Girlfriend calls me. She goes, hey, you want to go to the something fisherman? And it was Friday and I love clam chatter and they were serving clam chatter. And I'm like, yeah, I want to go. So we went and it's all nautical. So the chairs are wooden. And as I go to sit up at the end of the meal, my stockings catch on the wooden chair and they run. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm like, I'll be right back. Go to the bathroom and change my stockings. And I'm like, thank you, spirit, for the message. That's Claire audience at Claire audience at work. Um, Claire cognizance is where you just know things. You know who's calling. You know who's at the door. You know something's happened. <clears throat> my mother has this really, really strongly. One time my, my youngest brother, um, had a car accident and my mother calls while she's in Florida and she goes, what happened to Peter in the car? And we were all like, how does she know? You know, anyway. So we all have these abilities and for different reasons, we've closed them down and turned them off. So I had a client and um, she was the visionary for a tribe. And 
she was the elder, like she was the one elder that was left. So all of the leaders of the tribe now were like the next generation. So they don't, didn't always listen to her messages. And she was saying, you know, there's their marauders that are going to come, we're going to be attacked. And they didn't believe her. And they're like, oh, old lady, that's a bunch of bunk. You don't know what you're talking about. And of course, the village gets, you know, the tribe gets killed and they're mad at her. They say it's her fault. She brought this forth by speaking what it was that she saw. And they burned a couple little pieces of uh, chips to the point they made them red hot like coals. They put them on her eyes and they burnt her eyes out. And then they left her alone to die. <clears throat> and the decision that she made was to never use her psychic vision again. So we've made decisions like that in different lifetimes. You may have been burned at the stake, you know, for the things you saw. Uh, imagine how Joan of Arc felt. She was never going to want to get meshes again. I, you know, I lead France to victory and then they kill me. So we go in and we do work to find out the places where you've closed down these abilities. Because these abilities are God-given, like they're, they're wide open. And really they're more like on a scale of one to a hundred, but I'm like, let's just start with 10. And da, da, da. Clara sentience, like sometimes people will get freaked out and not want to feel the presence of spirit. Sometimes if I'm tired and it's late, there's this fascinating thing you can do with your camera. You guys are aware of orbs, right? Orbs are spirits that are traveling. At night, you turn off the lights in your room, you turn on the light in your camera and you turn on the recorder or you, you just have the camera up. You don't even have to turn the recorder on and you'll see orbs going in and out of your room, coming and talking to you. And one night my grandmother came, I could tell this was my grandmother's energy. And she passed away right before my mom and dad got married. And then I was born a year later, so I never met her. But um, she's always been one of my guides. So you can communicate with them and have an, you know, more of an open relationship with them. Some, some of these abilities scare people you know, for various and sundry reasons. But what's really amazing is that when you start to move the gauge on this, all kinds of things open up. Um, clairsentience, claircognizance, clairvoyance, clairaudience. So those are the four that I work on. <clears throat> so Meg, for today, let's dig into this. You ready? Okay, please unmute. Everyone, let's say thank you to Meg for being- I'm unmute, unmuted. Okay, beautiful, for being today's guinea pig. Are you down in Australia? Yeah, God bless Melbourne. You here. Oh, I love that. One of my best friends is in Sydney. I, one of these days, I keep threatening to go. I will, I promise. Um, okay. Ooh. So I'd like to, I'm gonna bring everybody into a meditative state. So I meditate a state. So I invite you all to just go ahead and close your eyes for a moment. Take a beautiful breath in through your nose, really deeply breathe in. And then go ahead and exhale through your mouth. And as you do, let your consciousness kind of drop from your head, start to sink down towards your heart. Take another beautiful inhale in through the nose, breathing in life force, breathing in prana, breathing in spirit consciously. And then go ahead and take a nice relaxing exhale out through the mouth. Again, continuing to sink down into the heart. Take another deep, rich, beautiful inhale in through the nose more slowly than before. And then a nice relaxing exhale down, out through the mouth and fully coming into the heart. So Meg, I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to just give me the first response that comes to you, okay? On a scale of one to 10, at what level is your clear audience, your ability to hear messages from spirit? Three. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, at what level is your clairvoyance, your ability to see spirit beyond your eyes? Two. Okay, very good. On a scale of one to 10, at what level is your clairsentience, your ability to feel and sense spirit? Thank you. Very good. And then on a scale of one to 10, at what level is your claircognizance, 
your ability to know information from spirit. Eight. Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to go to clairvoyance. It's the lowest. It's at a two. And hi, Hannah. Welcome. I suspect it's waiting for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> we always start with the lowest one. So what we're going to do mm. is we're just going to go in and we're going to take a look. So with clairvoyance, where I go in for that is I go into the third eye because the third eye is the eye that opens inwards and lets you see. It's where you are able to, to dream. It's where you're able to, to see when messages come, come through to you. When I first came out with my abilities, I had been on a trip to Israel and I laid my hands on the grave of a, of a dead ascended master. He was called one of the Sadikim uh, outside of the city of David. And then when I put my hands on this grave, this golden shaft of light came down, surrounded me and the guy in the grave started talking to me. And he says, welcome home, beloved. Your father is waiting for you. And I, I said to him telepathically, my father. And he said back to me, Abraham. And I, and I questioned and I said, Abraham. And he said, you know him as Avram. So since I was young, I've had a spirit guide whose name is Avram and he looked like David Strathern to me. And uh, the man in the grave said to me, he's Abraham the patriarch and you were one of his daughters. And I said, no daughters were ever mentioned in the Bible. And he said, doesn't matter. And we were literally headed to Hebron that afternoon to go to the grave of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob at the castle. And I stood there in front of Abraham's grave and I was crying my eyes out. And there was like some kind of Kundalini shift that happened for me. I had an, a couple incredible visions while I was there on that trip. And um, I later found out that he is known as the Rishash, the Rabbi Shalom Sharabi, and inscri inscribed on the front of his, on the top of his grave, not on the side, it says, uh, you who come with purity of heart, I will speak with thee. And so, you know, I didn't know. I was the last person to put my hands on the grave. A girlfriend of mine took a picture of it. But ever since then, I've had this ability to see and hear from spirit really clearly. So a few months later, I'm with my best friend. And all of a sudden I'm like, Veronica, I have a message for you. And she goes, you do? And I said, yeah. And it turned out to be a man that she worked for, a doctor. And he had tried to save his son from the undertow and he did save his son, but he lost his own life. And he came through and gave messages to her and stuff I wouldn't have known of. And uh, she said, I didn't know you could talk to the dead. And I said, neither did I, but I guess I can now. <laughs> so sometimes they open up in the weirdest of ways, right? So with clairvoyance, what I do is I'll, I'm gonna have you breathe, Meg, into your third eye. Take a breath into your third eye. And when you exhale, I want you to imagine going back about two inches until you come to the center of your head. And there's an enormous cave there that's called the Cave of Brahman. Your third eye is there and there's something that's blocking it. So I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. And I want you to just give me the very first answer that comes to you. When you look at your third eye and whatever it is that's around it, what color is it? Black. Thank you. What shape is it? Um, first thing that comes to you. Why well, you gave me this cave image. <laughs> so cave-ish. Okay. All right. How big is it? Uh, the size of a room. Okay, thank you. If you could give a weight to it, how much does it weigh? Am I meant to be looking forward? You're meant to be looking within. So instead of trying to look out, which is the world of duality, with your eyes closed, I want you to focus within. There's something that's covering your third eye. I don't think it weighs very much. Okay, very good. What temperature is it? Cool. Thank you. What material is it made of? 
Gas. Thank you. Okay. Does it have any sensation or movement to it or does it stay still? It's a little dark, dark gas cloud. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. What is its purpose? Protection. Thank you. And that's exactly what it does. These things are here. They're, they're objects that we've put there to protect us from something that happened in the past that was traumatic to us. Does that make sense to all of you? Okay, beautiful. You're doing great, Meg. The next series of questions I'm gonna ask repetitively and there will be a point where the answer is gonna be nothing else. But for right now, I'm, my question for you is, what are the feelings and emotions that are trapped inside of it? Fear, grief. Thank you. What else? Persecution. Thank you. I want you to really breathe into that persecution one. Take a deep breath into it. Allow yourself to feel that fear. Allow yourself to feel the grief, to feel the persecution. The reason that these are closed down is we have feelings and emotions. We have energy that's stuck inside of us from things we haven't been able to allow ourselves to feel. Does that make sense? Okay, beautiful. My love, what other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? Um, bitterness, resentment. Thank you. Bitterness, resentment. Thank you. I want you to breathe into that. Take a breath in. Your exhale, I want you to feel into that bitterness, feel into that resentment. Beautiful. Take another inhale in. On your exhale, what other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? maybe just fear again I'm not really sure okay that's good I want you to feel into the fear again just allow yourself to breathe into it it can't harm you take a beautiful inhale and on your exhale breathe into the fear when I teach yoga if people have a point of tension before it becomes pain I have them breathe into that tension when you bring breath to anything it's going to help dissolve it it's like a universal solvent Take another inhale. With your exhale, breathe into that fear. Any other feelings or emotions trapped inside of it? Perhaps of being seen, mm -hmm. perhaps of the power. Yes, thank you, perfect. Being seen and the power that comes with that. Anyone able to relate to any of this? Right? I'm meant to stay small, be the good girl. Yes, there you go. Stay small, be the good girl. I want you to take a nice deep breath into that. Exhale into that. Stay small, be the good girl. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Take another inhale in. On your exhale, what other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? Grief. Thank you. My love, I really want you to breathe into that grief. Really let yourself feel it. Yeah, take a nice exhale into that grief. All the ways in which you have needed to shrink, to fit. All the ways that you have needed to not let the world see who you truly are, the magnificence and the power that you truly are. You've needed to stay small in order to survive. In this dark gas cloud, it's been a way of protecting you, a way of hiding you. Gorgeous. 
Take another inhale in. And on your exhale, breathe into it. What other feelings and emotions are trapped inside of it? Guilt and shame. Thank you. you. For betraying the self. Yeah. Yep. Guilt and shame for betraying the self. Take a beautiful deep breath into that. Exhale and let yourself feel that and let it go. Guilt and shame. Trail of the self. So what's beginning to happen is as she's going through all of these, they're beginning to lighten up for her. Meg, can you give a confirmation for that? Yeah. What's happening is there's a alchemical process of duplication. And there's a law in physics that says duplication causes erasure. So as we're allowing her to breathe into and to feel these emotions, they're literally dissolving. Yeah. Duplication causes what? Erasure. It's based on Einstein's theory of relativity, m equals mc squared. So the equation is that energy is equal to mass times the constant, which is the speed of light squared. So when you can get anything to travel at the speed of light, any kind of mass, any kind of stuck energy, it instantly converts back to pure white light energy, which is God, which is love. And when it's not love, when we slowed it down enough, it becomes guilt and shame and fear and grief and persecution and bitterness and resentment and staying small and protection. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Take another inhale and I'm a huge quantum physics geek. I'm like a total nerd about it. I like, ah, I get so excited. <laughs> String theory. Anyway. Interests me a lot too. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fascinating because it is, it's the explanation for God. E equals X yes. squared. E equals yes. C squared is the most exquisite, most elegant summation of what God is. I had a teacher in ministerial school and his final question, the, the exam said, what is God? And he wrote e equals MC squared and got an A on the paper. That's all he wrote. It's brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Science proves God in right? my... Exactly. Yeah. And, and God proves science. Take uh, I work in science. Oh, and I so I'm that. not, See, I'm not allowed... I'm right. not a good girl if Listen, I don't if I access any of this. Baby, what a great place to hide out. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Light mole. Inside the mind. Oh, it's brilliant. Okay. Take another inhale in. Take another exhale into that cloud. Any other feelings or emotions that are trapped inside of it? Guilt There's deep fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I call that fatigue? Trying to keep a beach ball underwater. Eventually <laughs> that thing's going to surface. The truth has to surface. I'm sorry. In the end, we're going to know where Jimmy Hoffa's body was buried. Who killed JFK? We're going to know all the secrets of the universe. <laughs> Take a beautiful inhale into that fatigue. Nice, beautiful breath in, nice deep exhale, let that go. This is what wears us out. What wears us out is not the work that we do, it's everything that we do to try and suppress the world from seeing who we truly are. It's Marianne Williamson's quote, that what it is that we truly fear is for the world to see our greatness. Meg, take another beautiful breath in. And then on your exhale, are there any other feelings or emotions trapped inside of it? Oh, there's still the issue of being seen. Okay. So being judged. Can, yep. Oh, being judged. There you go. Meg, I want you to just completely suspend your mind for a moment. What happened to you the last time you were judged for your spiritual gifts? First answer that comes to you. Oh, I don't want 
to say the obvious one because I I feel like it's just me coming up with an answer for you. No, no. <laughs> like, you know the obvious answer. You know no. the burned at the stake answer. Okay, well, guess what? I don't have that answer. I wasn't burned at the stake, but you were. And all the emotion that you're feeling, baby, those are tears of truth. Okay. So that was a that was a life path that you chose. Can you see why, if you were judged and you were burned at the stake, why you would keep your clairs really turned down? You know, imagine a, a flame on the stove and you have it on high and it's on 10 and then you put it all the way down at two and it's like barely there, barely there. Someone could miss it if they blink, you know? Yeah, but there's a, the equivalent going on now that the witch hunt for all truth. <laughs> right? It's, it's exactly, it's the other side of the same coin. Okay, beautiful. Take another inhale. It still doesn't feel safe. Okay. All right. So let's go back into that. Doesn't feel safe. Take a nice inhale in. Exhale into that place where it doesn't feel safe. Meg, what decision did you make as a result of that incident? to hide thank you and what have been the consequences of hiding betrayal of self thank you what other consequences betrayal of spirit thank you what other consequences inauthenticity thank you beautiful what else not living my fullest expression. Thank you. What other consequences left? Having untrue relationships. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Which has been the largest untrue relationship that you've had in your life? Um, not sure I can share that on social media. <laughs> okay. Would you venture to say that there's a place where you've been really untrue to yourself? Unwittingly, yes. Yes. And granted, unwittingly, yes. No, I'm not asking you to spill any tea here, my love. That's what private sessions are for. <laughs> okay. Any other consequences? from having made that decision to hide? I just don't serve my highest purpose. Thank you. Beautiful. And what is your highest purpose? What are you here for? I'd like to embody um, the living Christ light and be a pillar of peace mm. to show people their truth. Yeah. By living your own. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Any other feelings or emotions left inside of that dark, gas cloud oh, I've got my, I've got thoughts hitting me now because because of the um, the publicity of this. <laughs> Um, I guess it's fear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's okay. Meg, what I promise you is that those who have gathered and the people that are going to see this are going to be served by it. There's not going to be judgment. There will not be recriminations. I promise you that. I've been deeply served by all your work and some mm -hmm. of your colleagues. So 
I'm so delighted to hear that. I've been uh, very blessed. <clears throat> I've been doing this for 33 years. I've trained thousands of people and have worked hundreds of thousands of hours, tens of thousands of hours, inching towards hundreds. And uh, I teach, I heal, and I mentor because I want to. I want to give people these tools. I don't want to just do them. I love doing them, but that's why I teach them to people. You know, mm. because I think that I can give you a fish, or I can teach you to fish. I happen to love sushi, yeah. so if I'm giving you a fish, we're having sushi. But I think it's way more important for you to learn how to fish, and that's what I'm here doing. And the tools that I'm bringing forth that you know they they come from the Egyptian temples. This is all, you know, what was called Egyptian high magic. Um, because Hathor is the goddess, the Egyptian goddess that I work most closely with, and then also working with Magdalene and Yeshua, who were trained at the temples of Isis, that were really the temples of Hathor, because Isis was a little bit of a usurper, but I'm forgiving her, it's happening, it's happening, still human, okay, any other feelings or emotions trapped in that gaseous dark cloud? I'm not sure it's sort of it's rearranging itself, figuring itself out. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Take a beautiful inhale in. On your exhale, you're going to surround that cloud with a field of love. Complete positive regard, like God's golden light. You're just gonna completely embrace it and all of the feelings and all of the emotions that we've discussed, that entire incident of being burned at the stake, the decisions that you made as a result of that incident, you're gonna embrace all of that in this gorgeous golden cloud of light. Let me know when you've done that. You have enough yeah. love in your heart to do that. Okay, beautiful. Now, here's the next part that's really gonna trip you out. Take an inhale in. And with an exhale, you're gonna glide all of that energy out of you until it's about three feet in front of you. It's just gonna glide right out of you. That golden light is like spiritual Vaseline, I call it. Let me know when it's about three feet in front of you and it's all the way out. Yeah. Okay, take another inhale and on your exhale, turn it white. This is the psychic part of this tool. This tool is called psychic surgery. You take an inhale in and from your exhale, you go into the middle of it and you turn it white. And what you're going to do is you're, you've ne you're now duplicated it and, and all that energy releases and it goes right back to source. It just goes right back to God. And God leans over and he goes, thank you. Because <laughs> we've been holding on to his energy and he'd like that energy back. Mm. Beautiful. Meg, I want you to ask one of the fairies to borrow her fairy wand and you're gonna tap the place inside of your third eye where that lived. And it's gonna heal it. It's gonna seal it and protect it so that it's, function is coming back online okay you might ask an angel is that okay absolutely my love absolutely the angels and the fairies working in harmony with each other sometimes jesus will come in and he'll just put his hand over your front of your third eye and back of your head and there's golden light that emanates from his hands and it's all healed it's all sealed See, these things live inside of us like psychic tumors and they feed off of our energy supply. So when we remove them, we just need to, I use the golden fairy dust to kind of cauterize them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You ready for the next question? Really? On a, on a scale of zero to 10, at what level is your clairvoyance? 
Sorry, I was just finishing up. Um, we'll do it again. On a scale of zero to 10, at what level is your clairvoyance? Five or six. Which is it? I know you're second guessing it. I know you're saying that's impossible. It was a two. What was the first one? <laughs> See you guys, I know what you're up to. <laughs> what was the first answer you got? Uh, oh, it's to be proved <laughs> to okay. my scientific self. <laughs> What's the first answer you got? You didn't answer my question. Yeah. Uh. I'm going to call it a five. Okay. So the first answer she got was a six. She's trying to lower it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure about that, but okay. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> so we just moved her gauge from a two to a five, maybe a six. I'm going to round up. How's that? You're welcome to pull it back down. You, you guys are welcome to do whatever you want. But this is this brilliant technique called clearing the clairs. Well done. Meg, thank you so much for your willingness, baby. I know that was a very vulnerable thing to do. And I love you and I thank you for that. Thank you. So, you know, this is one of the six psychic healing tools that I teach. I have a workshop coming up called Quantum Healing. You learn psychic surgery, which we did with Turning It White. You learn clearing the clairs. And then you learn incident handling, which is where we went. We looked at what happened and the decisions that you made. You learn to read the Akashic records. You learn to do past life healing in the Akashic records. You learn entity handling, which is the removal of, you know, life force that's attached itself to you. That and so much more. So I thank you all for being here. If you have any questions, please feel free to DM me. My assistant Priyanka is dropping uh, a link to the class that's going to be happening on March first. It's going to be in the evenings at six o'clock, and uh, it's a couple hours each week for six weeks. So I thank you all for being here. We'll be back, we'll be back here on, uh, on Friday to do some Akashic healing. I wish you all a beautiful day. Thank you again, Meg. I love you. Thank you for being here from Australia in the wee hours of the morning. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sharon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Paulette. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Priyanka. I love you all. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. Thank you. Mwah. I'll see you all soon. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> Thanks Bye. for keeping me and all of my humanity. <laughs> you soon. And me too. <laughs> That's all there is. It's just love. Bye, guys. <laughs>